everybody, it's Gina here from Gina Makes It. Welcome back or welcome to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be showing you how to create a travel folio using a free template that is on my website at ginamakesit.com. A couple of videos ago, I pulled out this folio that I use to keep some of my older seed packets in and it's really meant to well it's meant for whatever you want to use it for but really when I created the template I meant to have it house a traveler's notebook and I'm trying to see I don't really have one that's like the right size it's just like a standard size traveler's notebook now this obviously is a passport size traveler's notebook so it's a little bit smaller but you get the idea it would it does house a taller standard size traveler's notebook but I've never used it for that I've used it for this to hold the seeds and then I started making another one uh, without the flaps this is some um, vintage wallpaper this is my fa I think this is my favorite one that I've ever seen. The pinks, when you print this on matte photo paper, the distinction of colors that you get is completely unbelievable. This, it looks like it's actually painted on. It is just so beautiful. Anyhow, that's in my Etsy store. Um, I started making one and I was mid make without the flaps. Uh, I don't remember what I was going to use it for, but I might continue it and create a pocket and house some dried flowers in it because I am drying in the process of drying some flowers and I think this might make a nice um, folio for that. But like I said, the, the main purpose really was to hold a traveler's notebook. I'm going to make another one and I don't know if I'm going to use it for a traveler's notebook again <laughs> but just know that that option exists in case you're looking to make one for that so i wanted to talk come on here and just talk briefly about the template itself so the template there's three pages to it and it does have to be assembled um, slightly and i have on the template that to maintain the original size of the template, set print size to 100%. If your printer scales the image below 100%, the final product will be smaller. This is true. Whenever I go to print this on my printer, it automatically scales it down to 97%. And at that percentage, when cut, it will not hold a traveler's notebook. So it'll be just that much smaller that it just a traveler's notebook will not fit inside there now if that's not your purpose and you don't mind about that three percent then you know have at it and print at whatever size that you want but i just wanted to be clear and you can even see in the margin i printed it out both ways just so you can see you could even see the margin there's the margin there and there's the margin there so it is you know significant when you're talking in terms of like inches half inches and quarter inches stuff like that so i just wanted to point that out first i'm going to cut out these templates okay so all of my pieces are cut out and now what i'm going to do is trace this onto my cardstock so basically it's fairly simple so this is going to be the base I'm not gonna score this template because I'm gonna trace this onto my base and then I'm gonna score that. But this is going to be the base of your folio. This is gonna be the spine. And then this is going to be the front. So if it goes like this, and then there's your front cover, here's your back cover. So you're gonna glue this part onto the back and then you're gonna score it and you're gonna flip it over. And then these are going to be your top your top little flaps that come down. It's very simple. I am using um, black cardstock, just regular eight and a half by 11 pieces of black cardstock. So to see my pencil marks, I am going to use a white colored pencil. I'm hoping that is going to show up. I've never done this, so I don't really know, but I'm hopeful. <laughs> so to make this a lot easier, I'm just gonna use my paper as a guide so I have this left hand corner lined up with the left hand corner so really the only cutting that I'm gonna have to do is the top and then the right hand side so I'm just gonna take my colored pencil 
and I'm just going to run it loosely around the edge and there it worked like a charm so I'm also going to just lightly take my pencil and put the score now the score is an inch so in case you don't do that you'll, you can just know that um, it is an inch spine but I am just going to do that so I know where to score it and I'm going to do the same thing for the rest of my templates okay now that that is finished I am just going to cut out my templates you might want to mark your templates if you think it might make it easier I did uh, assign names to it just so it would be uh, easier for someone who's not familiar with the template to kind of manipulate and do it you don't really have to watch the video to do it if you didn't really want to so these are identical these are the exact same size but instead of just doing it once I did it twice just for the sake of ease so I am going to do my little scoring here just so I have a general idea and I want the textured side to be on the outside so this is like a, has a slight texture to it this cardstock so I'm just going to do my score there and then I've got this lined up properly I'm going to back this out here and I'm going to do my score there so let me finish cutting these out. Okay. Now I'm going to score my areas that I want to bend. So I'm going to grab my little Martha Stewart scoreboard here. I have a very small one. If you have a large one, that's great. If you don't have one at all, that's fine too. It can easily be done without a scoreboard. But since I have one, I am just going to use it and I'm just going to run it down that, that area. And like I said, there we go. You can even fold it over now if you wanted to. It does make it a little bit easier to create that fold line. So there is my front and back of the main folio. Now I'm going to score this one. And it looks like it's three quarters of an inch, not an inch. When I said that it was an inch, that was wrong. It was like I said, it was a while ago that I made this template and I didn't really know if it was going to be of interest to anyone so that's why it's just kind of been sitting in my computer so now that we have all of our pieces cut and scored it's time to attach them so if you look at the one that I created for the seeds you can kind of see how this is going to work here are our flaps with our score Here's that little side flap, and here is our main part. So here is our main part. Now this is where you can decide to do whatever it is that you want. I made it so it completely overlaps the back portion of the folio itself. Now I think what I'm going to do instead of having it go all the way to the end, Oh, I think I might just do that. I'm pretty sure I'm going to cover the inside with a piece of paper. So I just don't want it to cause a problem with this crease here. So I am just going to cut a tiny, tiny, tiny bit off of the edge. And I'm going to leave it doubled because all that's going to do is strengthen it in the long run. So I'm going to line up this part because this is the part this back part is the part there so I'm going to take some glue and for this I am trying some glue that my mom recently gave me she told me it's supposed to be 
liquid glue. Obviously she hadn't tried it yet because the bag was still on, but ooh. maybe this isn't the best type of, and I'm going to get, actually this is might be good because I'm able to get right up to the edge because that's where my page is going to meet my papers. around all the edges because that's where I want a really nice seal. I'm going to have to ask her and I'll link it below where she got this from. I'm sure it was online. Okay. Now I'm just going to take Because remember, this is going to go on the outside, on the opposite side of our other spine. And I want to really get it nice and close. Oh, yeah. And if you have a little bit of overhang because it just you were off by a sixteenth of an inch or something, that can easily be just trimmed up afterwards. But you can see there is our the basis of our folio. Now what I'm going to do is attach my other piece, my bottom piece. But before I do that, I'm going to round the corners because I do want the corners around it. And once I finish doing that, actually, no, what I'm going to do is trim because I see I do have some areas where there is a little bit of overhang. And I'm just going to take my paper cutter. I'm going to trim that nice. There we go. Nice and smooth. This side appears to be okay. But one thing I am going to do to my little flap ups on the inside is take my corner rounder and round the corners now because I think it'll be easier to do it now than uh, later. And I am just going to round the upper corners because I do want my folio to be rounded. And I think it'll be easier to do it now then later for the flaps for the other parts i think it'll be okay to to do it uh later okay so i do see a little bit of the white on here and i don't like that so i'm going to just put that off now i might end up covering this flap i don't know but just in case i don't let's do that so now you're just going to take that bottom part. So here's our piece. We scored it and we're, I'm just going to put glue here, attach it to the bottom, and then you're going to have your little flap. I'm going to use the same glue because you're really able to get up into the corners with this. And that's kind of what we want here. And it says if you get it over on something to just use some warm water and it'll clean it up. So I'm just going to fold it back down and really line it up, kind of flip it over, see where that score line is, kind of bend it and there we go. What's nice is you can move it too after you put it down. Like sometimes with the fabric tech you can't really move it. So this is that side. I don't even think I'm going to add any more on here because I 
feel like there's enough on my my little spongy brush here okay and then what's nice is that you can just throw these out because they're from the dollar store oh you know i did it on the wrong side because i want the texture to well let's see if that really does clean up with warm water but before i actually i'm not even going to bother because i'm probably i know i'm going to cover that up so i'm just gonna i was too busy marveling at the the glue and the um, brushes from the dollar store i was not paying attention i'm just going to add it there and then i'm going to line it up at the bottom just like i did top one i'm going to flip it over because i really want that to be right at that score line and there we go okay cool now i'm going to let that dry and that basically is the folio so you can see this is the area where a traveler's notebook will fit. And actually, I think I'm going to go grab one to show you while that dries. Now, this is just a standard size traveler's notebook that I have in my stash. But you can see it fits perfectly inside of this little folio. So that's what happens when you print it at 100%. Now, I am not going to continue talking while I'm doing this. I am going to move on and I'm going to start to decorate this. Now that you have a basic idea on how to just put the template together, I'm going to keep going and decorate this on my own for Halloween. I knew that I wanted to create a Halloween themed folio for Halloween, but I didn't really know in what capacity I wanted to create it. So I didn't know if I was going to use it to journal in or if I was going to use it to keep photos in or to keep ephemera in. So I just kind of went into it with an open mind without any parameters. And I decided to use this new kit that's called Hollow's Eve in my Etsy store. And I had this large picture of this woman, this old witch with these black cats. It's just beautiful. And I thought that I would use it as the base for the inside of the folio. So right now I'm just measuring it out. And I had printed this on some matte photo paper. So the colors are very rich and crisp. It's, it's actually a very beautiful illustration. I'm just measuring because I want to have it fit not only height wise but also width wise and I also want to measure where I have my score lines so it bends easily with the base itself so I just lined it up made a little pencil mark and then scored the area where it was going to lay over the scored mark the actual spine and the closure on each side so now I'm just using my bone folder to get a really nice crease in it and I'm going to go in with that same glue that I used to put together the folio and I'm going to adhere it down So you can see that I start with the scored area that is on the opening, like the closure part on the right hand side. And I just put glue in that specific area because I want to make sure that I line that up properly so everything bends. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the edges. But I first put the glue down in the actual crease part so I can get that scored area nice and stuck down. And now I'm just going to turn it and I'm going to work my way outwards by gluing it that way. But I'm also going to be folding it and working in the folds now that they're together so they kind of move as one.
felt that now was as good as time as any to round the rest of the corners just to give it that finished look and then I'm going to continue on decorating it. So I have this hem tape that my grandma actually gave me a very long time ago and I don't even know if they sell hem tape like this anymore because I don't use it. I don't really even know what hem tape is for. Um, it might hold the hem up or something or you use it to stabilize a hem or something. I, I don't know, but I have a lot in gray and black and I decided to use it as an accent over that area where I had glued down the edge of that illustration. So you're probably wondering what this is. <laughs> this is just a regular piece of eight and a half by 11 black cardstock, just plain that I spritz with some water and I crumpled up into a ball and I just let it dry. I did kind of spritz it a few more times just to keep rewetting it and kind of crumpled it up more. And I just felt like it gave it a really weathered sort of antique look. And I didn't really know what I was going to use it for. I was just experimenting. I thought, I wonder what would happen if I did that. And this was the outcome. I did decided to measure it and trim it down to create a pocket on the left hand side. So that's what I'm doing and I'm also going to use my paper corner rounder to chop off those sides so it is an identical image of the base below. I couldn't let it slip past me though without doing a little sewing. So I decided to do a tone on tone black thread, which is kind of hard to see in the video, but you can definitely see it in person. I tried experimenting with a few other threads, but I didn't really like a stark contrast. So I decided to do a tone on tone. And then I just glued the top, the left hand side and the bottom to create a pocket. So now I am cutting up a short story that was in an 1894 magazine for kids. And it's a Halloween short story. And this comes in that All Hallows Eve kit as well. And I decided to add it to the bottom flap and the top flap. So I am just measuring because I want it to fit just right with the words sort of centered in the middle. I decide that I'm going to add this witch lady to the pocket and I'm also going to add pieces of this lace to underneath it and uh, I'm going to round the corners of that short story just so it mimics the corners of that bottom flap and I'm also going to do some sewing around the edge just to kind of complete the look before I glue everything down. I decided to do the same thing with the other side of the story at the top flap, but instead of just decorating it with an image, I'm actually going to create a pocket using some black lace that I have in my stash. And this lace came off of like a little doily that I had just, I don't even know like where I got it from. I think my mom got it from an estate sale and she gave it to me. So I'm just gluing down the bottom portion and then the left and right side and I'm just going to create a little kind of gothic pocket with this black lace. You could see I also did the same thing on the top there. I did some sewing around the perimeter of that story and I also rounded the bottom corners. So I decided to fussy cut this witch and all of these images, um, I'm just in case I don't say it, do come from that new kit in my Etsy store which is called All Hallows Eve. And I decided to cut her out and add her to the pocket on an angle. I think she looks really cute and it's like she's looking down. So it kind of naturally looks like she's kind of heading up on an angle. I also decide to cover up this right hand little flap that is the ultimately the closure with some just regular coffee dyed paper. I was getting kind of 
not sick of the black, but I wanted to add a little bit of variety, but I didn't want like some crazy color. So I just did some sewing around the perimeter. I rounded the edges and right underneath where the edge of that uh, picture meets the actual base of this journal or travel folio, I guess is what I'm calling it. I do add some more of that hem tape to the edge so it kind of peeks out and matches the left hand side. I know that I want to decorate some areas on here with some items, so I decide to do a little bit of fussy cutting of some of these images to see where I might want to put some of them. It's always a lot easier after you've cut it out to figure out where you want something and then you can place it on there and kind of move things around. So I decided that I'm going to put these pumpkins in the bottom right hand corner of this little coffee dyed pocket that I just made and I'm just going to stack them on top of each other. Moved on to the cover and this is where things get a little interesting. I do a few things that I've never done before but that I've wanted to do. I'm trying to figure out how to organize these crinkled pieces of paper with the lace. I know for a fact that I want them on the cover. I like the look. I like the feel of them. I like the texture and I also like the way this piece of lace, you can see this is the doily that I was talking about earlier. I like how it hangs off the edge of that closure. It's going to give a nice little scalloped uh, detail to the cover itself. But I'm realizing like, hmm, how am I going to keep this closed? But the other one that I made, I used some twine, but I had picked up these magnetic buttons, which are just magnets from the dollar store, which I was kind of marveling at. A while ago, I was looking for magnets like this on Amazon and they were really expensive. So when I came across this in the craft area in the dollar store, of course, I scooped it up and I wanted to see how it was going to work. And they're really strong. That was the problem I was having with the ones from Amazon is that they were not strong at all and they were expensive. The, this was during like the heart of the pandemic. And so I was wasn't going anywhere and so I sort of was relying on online sources to get these magnets but I know that these are new to the craft area of the uh, dollar store so they have a lot of new stuff there that is pretty interesting. I just glued the one magnet to the inside of that pocket which I actually end up moving uh, to get a better like connection between the two to the uh, top of that inside flap but you'll see that in a second and then I glue this one down on top which I end up moving to the inside of the pocket. So I'm new to magnets. <laughs> so I was just trying to figure out where uh, I wanted them to go to get the best closure, but it is a pretty strong connection. So I'm just gluing this lace down and then I'm going to glue these crumpled pieces that I had already trimmed to size and I cut the corners and I do a little sewing just like on the other ones and I glue them down.
trim the lace at the top and the bottom and I decided to add these numbers 31 to the cover. I got these a long time ago from Ikea in the stationery department of the store. I want to say like five years ago. It might even be more than five years ago and I've never used any of them but they looked very sort of gothic and Halloween-y to me. So I picked out the three and the one and I added the little string that it comes with to the top and I just kind of angle them off on the cover and I add a little fussy cut black cat to the top of the three and I don't really do anything else to the cover I feel like the crumpled cover like second cover that I added to it the lace and then these two details sort of really are enough for this and I still have yet to figure out what I'm going to use it for right now it's just holding all of like my ephemera from this kit and all of the stuff from other Halloween kits that I have in my store that I've cut apart Halloween isn't that big of a holiday in our house, especially since my kids are getting a little bit older. I've never really been like super into Halloween. I like it, but it's not something that I know there are some people who like love Halloween as much as they love Christmas or Easter or any other holiday, but I just never really have gotten that much into it where uh, I could create like a whole journal, I think now around it. Um, it's just not something that would fit into my lifestyle, but there is definitely a lot that I could document about Halloween, carving pumpkins, trick-or-treating and costumes and that sort of stuff. So I think I might use it for that. In what capacity, I'm not quite sure, but I'm having fun putting this little folio together for to hold the ephemera for right now. And then once it gets a little bit closer and we start doing things that are more Halloween in nature, I will definitely figure out how to use it. So I want to decorate the inside flaps, the top and the bottom, and, and this little part that's like a gutter, I'm going to call it. This hem tape just fits perfectly. This hem tape really came in handy. I've had this for a while too. I want to say for about five years. My grandma gave it to me when she gave me her old sewing machine and uh, she just gave me all her supplies and so I never really knew what to do with it because it was black. I don't really use black a lot in my projects but it's perfect for Halloween and it's a nice little dainty floral but yet it's sort of kind of spooky at the same time. So I add that to the top and the bottom and then I decide to add a little pocket at the bottom here with some more of that lace from that doily and I just glue it on top of a piece of scrap of coffee dyed paper. At first I was going to glue this on top but then you couldn't see how beautiful that lace was underneath so I decide to just put this underneath it as like a background image and put the pocket over it. What I liked about this image in particular was that the corners were already rounded so it kind of matched with the whole rounded corner theme. I just trim the side and then I add some glue to each side and then the bottom to create that pocket. I took another image from that kit that I cut out and I added some coffee dyed paper behind it and I did a little bit of sewing around the perimeter and that's just like a little decoration. And then I glued this fussy cut bat to the bottom of that pocket. So these kept falling out of the top pocket so I decided to move them and add the other cut out ephemera to that top pocket but I still kept having the same problem most likely just because it was a piece of lace that was holding it down or trying to hold it down and I also had some larger ephemera and images that just wasn't going to fit in that left hand pocket so I decided to make a quick envelope a bigger one for the middle to kind of stuff in there and I will obviously take that out if I do end up putting a little journal in there or maybe I'll make a journal and put the journal inside the envelope. I don't really know what I'm going to do but there are so many possibilities and I just sew around the edges to kind of keep it closed and I round the corners to continue on with that theme and then I take one of the larger images, I do a little bit of sewing around it and then I glue it to the back of it. It was actually this one because it didn't fit but then I realized how much I really liked that image and I decided to add it to the outside of the envelope. And then for that ephemera in that top pocket that wasn't really staying put, I make a smaller little envelope out of a scrap piece of black cardstock that I had and I do this exact same thing. I do a little sewing to keep it shut and then I add an image to the back side. Yeah. 
that's going to pretty much wrap up today's video. It was a long one. Thanks for sticking with me. I hope that you enjoy using this template. Like I said, you can get that on my website at GinaMakesIt.com. And I'd love to see your creations with it. There's so many possibilities with it. This is just one possibility that I never even thought of to create some sort of like an ephemera folder, at least for right now. As always, thanks so much for supporting my channel and my little Etsy store. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you next time.